Yay! You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And I've uh, I've been thinking about taking carpeting out of the office. It's yeah. a wood floor underneath Is it. Is it? Oh, wow. It's an old wood floor. It's a stained wood floor. Sure. And Probably it's, have pet stains. Pet stains, yeah. and it was stained from our predecessors. It's just got problems. I was thinking of painting over it. What well, you, you know, I think it's a great idea, especially if you don't want to refinish, which can be costly, you know, and a, a lot of work and a lot of disruption. Painting a wood floor is actually a great idea because, you know, you don't have to get into the fine refinishing aspect of it. So it can be kitschy, it can be cool, it can be almost like an art gallery look, it can look, you know, like more of a fun, playful thing. It's another place to integrate color into the into the room. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great idea. So when you paint a wood floor, there's a couple of th- things to consider. Number one, you're going to pull out your carpet, you're going to pull out your carpet padding, and then you're going to go, oh. oh my goodness, I'm filthy. But it's not just you, because no. carpet... It's the industry. When you when you pull out the, the padding underneath, you're going to see years. like a half inch of dirt. It's, it's years it's of It's kind of stuff. unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah. So you pull that off, use a, 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 a industrial shop vacuum shop oh, vac yeah. if you have one. Hopefully it's got a HEPA filter on it because then it won't throw a bunch of dust into the environment. Mm-hmm. Get all the dust out. Then there's probably going to be staples from the carpet padding that they put down. You're going to pull those out with needle-nose pliers. Then you'll probably have little holes. You'll want to backfill any little holes that you can. Oh, in the wood. In the wood if oh, you want right. to. If you want to be more pristine. If not... A lot of times the paint will fill in. So oh, okay. anyway, once you get the holes filled with a patching compound, you can either use Bondo for bigger holes. You can use uh, regular spackle. or Wood glue, wood, maybe? Yeah, any, no. anything that's a wood patch. Wood patch. Or even patching that you would use, like fix all on a wall will okay. work just fine. Uh, you want to have it. You want to make sure that it's sandable product. It's something you can sand with a sander because you're going to need to do that. Oh, too. we're going to have to sand the wood you're floor first. You're going to have to sand the floor first if it's got any old finish on it, like a slight bit of polyurethane. Oh, and why? Because the paint won't stick. <clears throat> paint won't stick. Oh, so you're going to use a. Well, an this orb- is a couple day project. Then. Yeah. Okay. It is. You're going to so, want, want to use an orbital sander, hand sander with a dust mask. And we can rent that, right? You can rent it. Yeah, or you can buy one. They're about fifty bucks. Uh, you're going to want to get 100 grit sandpaper that that sticks on your orbital sander. Now, keep in mind the orbital sanders from different manufacturers have different systems to attach the paper to them. Uh-huh. So make sure that you get the right kind of paper. Some are Velcro that fasten on. Some you've got to actually uh, use a little device that clamps them down onto the bottom of the orbital sander. Some are adhesive, so make sure you know which what manufacturer sander you have and what they recommend for your sandpaper that goes on the bottom of the orbital sander. You know, those are the sing- they're the handheld ones that you go, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you plug them into the wall. Those work great. But so handheld want... is better, you think? I think it's great. It's much, much easier. You okay. Know? Now, you can control you... it, maybe. And you can control it easy. And, and you want to get knee pads. I can't stress this enough. Get some knee pads that are comfortable. Uh, buy them at the store. You will not regret buying a good set of knee pads because for gardening, they're great. Anything that you clean. Well, they're floor, fashionable. They're very they fashionable. They look good. They look great with booties. Woo! Do they ever? You know, with knee it's, highs. It, with the fall, it's the whole <clears throat> fall look. Yes. Right? So I would, I would vote for bright yellow or bright red. I want you to get them. <laughs> so get them. Try those. Try them. I'm telling you, they're great. They make some now that have hinged uh, sides to them, so they, when you bend down, they don't. They're not uncomfortable. So anyway, good, good knee pads. So we've got supplies to you get. Got some stuff to get. Man, right. this sounds like it's now more than two days because I, I have to think about getting the carpet up and all that. Then I've got to think about getting my sander and prepping the floor. These are now two days each. I mean, I'm, one day I'm, each. I'm thinking of. This is a three, four day project. I think it's about a. It, if you want to go casual with it and not be overwhelmed. I think you want to give yourself a part of three days. It's not going to be 12-hour days. No, no, It's no. going to be maybe an Day hour one. and a half to get rid of the carpet, sure. uh, an hour to vacuum and pull all the staples out. Right. So maybe th- three or four hours one day. The next day was sanding, maybe prepping the wood. three hours prepping the wood. The next now. day was painting. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe two hours. Okay. And so, you're going to do two coats. So now, after we've done we've done all the prep stuff, is there anything else that we need to do? Um, I mean, yeah. So you're sanding with the hundred grit sandpaper. You get the the sawdust off the floor by using a wet towel uh-huh. or a tack cloth. Because we don't want little crumbly wumbly. No, our paint. it wants to be pristine. That'd be so and maddening, oh, wouldn't it be? Yes. Right. So after you've done all this, and then if there's bare wood, right, mm-hmm. you're going to want to use a nice quality primer to hit the bare wood. Okay. 
get the, any barewood spots. And what about any pet stains? We won't worry about if any kind of... If there's a lot of pet stain and it's really a different color, you you may want to put a little primer over that Or maybe pet two coats too. of... Oh, just yeah, a... Just to, to kind of block that stain from coming through the paint job. Gotcha. Okay. So once you do all that, then you can go ahead and roll your paint on. Now you, the fun starts. Yeah. And you use a roller, right? And you can just cut... First, I would cut in the exterior walls of it where... You know, cut the floor to the baseboard with a paintbrush. I like to use a two and a half inch sash angle brush. Okay. Oh. Okay. You, you paint your line all the way around the perimeter of the room. Do the right. Uh -huh. do, do the nice, careful job. You probably can get away with not taping because it's pretty easy to cut a line when you're on the floor. Again, if you've got your comfy knee pads, you're going to love being down there. And then you let that uh, you, you get that whole perimeter done, and then you come back with your roller and just roll the paint on and watch it come together. And that's it. That's it. You do two coats and you're done. Wow. Floor looks great. So if what... you want something a little more durable, like if it's a lot of foot traffic and uh -huh. it's going to be things sliding over the wood, you may want to consider epoxy, which is a two-part. You're going to do everything we just talked about, but instead of using paint, you're going to use epoxy, which is a part A, part B. You mix two things together. Yes. Those can be tinted to any color. And then you go ahead and roll that stuff on. And it's got a little shorter working time, but when it dries and sets up, you could drive a Industrial. car. Hello. Yeah, it looks great. Like an auto garage. What if What if we were to use like porch and enamel and floor enamel paint? It's all good, but again, it will scratch if you slide big, heavy things across it. Sure, like office furniture. That's right. So, oh. uh, you know, you may want to... So epoxy now, is... Now, now, I will say that if if you use your, your, floor, your porch paint and all that exterior stuff, if it sets up and dries long enough... You'll be better better equipped to deal with the scratching and the scuff marks and stuff. Oftentimes, people put their furniture back on too soon and try and slide around or walk on it. I would give it 24 to 48 hours, even though it says it can probably be walked on sooner. Uh -huh. It's just best to really let it set up, especially on a nice hot sunny day. So yeah, because they're all saying like 24 hours, you're fine. But you're saying maybe I mean give, give it, it another, two days. Give it two days. Why? What's the really, rush? What's the rush? And really give yourself that time for it to set up and cure. Then you you don't have to worry about the footprints and the scratches and all that good stuff. I mean, I I'm seeing that maybe some paints might even take what more days, yeah, right? To yeah, really absolutely. like to, to pull Especially a piano over. Especially if it's been it. raining. Yeah. You're gonna want to give it another day or two to to set up. And I mean, why not give it a month? It, yeah, that can't so hurt. Why not move out? <laughs> Let's paint it and walk away. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done here. I hope the next the, guy enjoys it. Drive for ten years. <laughs> but yeah, there's a ton of great. You know, people don't consider the fact that you can not only create a whole another color palette on the floor. You can also open it up with some design. You could paint oh, yeah. striping. You could do stenciling. You can make a throw rug design. So yes, now it looks like there's a throw rug, but it's painted. And if you screw it up, you Who just cares? paint right over. Yeah. You're never going to know. I want to do this. I mean, I think this could be I a really fun you project. I do it. It's yeah. beautiful. And also keep in mind, some flooring, you're going to have slats. There may be some some space between the floor. If it's not hardwood, but just sort of a, you know, a, a, base, a base flooring system that you're meant to put flooring over, mm -hmm. that may not be... Uh, efficient in terms of insulation, it may you may actually be getting your your environment and your your weather coming up from the crawl space through that wood it could end up being colder or hotter than you thought it was before. So make sure before you paint that as that's not just the substrate on the floor that was the construction a aspect of the house. Uh -huh, do you know uh, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I do. Yeah. So, so so double check. Okay. Well, there's and a the lot way of... you'll know is you'll feel. Cold air sure. coming to your hand, right? Uh -huh. You could probably help it a bit by caulking between the wood slats, but it's probably not going to be that efficient. It's kind of like I was on a plane just a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. I could feel the cold air from outside coming in. It wasn't a good feeling. It's a leaky plane. I wasn't yeah, feeling no good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why is there cold air coming in from no, the wall that's of the plane? <laughs> probably because there's a hole in the plane. Yeah. Well, thank goodness it wasn't Sharknadoes. No. You know what I'm saying? I know. That's really scary. That's there's sharks news. that are flying through the air. Doggone it. So, um... I think that we could maybe even consider like a stencil design too, yeah. right? And they sell they sell great stenciling kits. Yeah, you can get them online, so you don't have to worry about being you don't an have artist. To worry. You can tape them down in place. Flowers. The, the or The biggest whatever. thing with stencils is to make sure they're flat and taped off on the floor so they don't move. 
uh-huh. and that you don't get underneath the edges of the stencil. You want to come sure. straight over it with your roller. Paint within the lines exactly. is what you're saying. There you go. <laughs> All there right. You go. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dolby. Sure to check us out on Facebook. Uh, just go uh, Facebook forward slash Home Wizards. Uh, the conversation, by the way, continues all the time. Yourhomewizards.com. Go down in a most delightful way.